What is going on, my homies? You guys have loved the Perfect Bass Boat series, so I got another one for you. Because I've gotten a million comments saying there's one boat you need to check out. One boat, like a lot. More comments than any, and that is a Skeeter. So I hooked up with my buddy Byron, dude. He's a good buddy from Florida, now lives in Tennessee. But I'm gonna have him walk through, what, what boat is this? An FX? are a, a Skeeter FXR20. And we're gonna take a look at the specs, what's nice about it, what's bad about it, what's good about it, what things I might like, because we are literally in the hunt for a perfect bass boat, because me, I'm getting a new boat. So hit that like and subscribe button. Let's go meet Byron real quick. I haven't seen Byron in like, Six years? It's been a long time. <laughs> it's been a lot. Byron is a transplant from Florida and now he's fishing. Dude, he catches some baits. What's your Instagram, dude? Byron underscore Childers. Byron underscore Childers. Yeah. He's soft spoken, but dude, go on there. He's got some giant. He likes swim bait fishing, dude. Like giant swim baits. It's pretty cool. Byron, why don't we start with something simple, dude? Tell me, we're looking at Skeeter FXR20. What are the, the basic specs on this thing? 20 foot four inches. It's almost 21. Yeah. Okay. Almost 21. Um, I had an FX21. And then the FXR21 last year, I can't tell the difference fishing out of this thing. It's shorter. I went shorter so it would fit in my garage. And uh, I run. it's faster than the 21. It's more responsive than the 21 in On my turns opinion. turns and like, stuff like that. You know, it's speed, yeah, turning and stuff like that. But uh, it's easier to tow. Yeah, I don't miss having a 21. I actually prefer the 20. So one of the first things that I noticed is you guys have seen, we did a Blazer, we did a Triton, and on the back of them, they have Mercury motors, right? They have that new, I think it's the, the Pro Excess four stroke and that. So immediately you look over and this guy's got a Yamaha VMAX. And I think, Byron, the, all of the Skeeters come standard with a Yamaha. Like, I don't even think you can get a Skeeter with no, a so Mercury. No, so Yamaha actually owns Skeeter. Yamaha owns Skeeter. Well, that, that would be why. But I don't know much about these motors. I've used one like once or twice. I know they're super quiet. Tell me a little bit about like the specs, what you got on here, what you like about it, what your whole shot is. So 250 SHO, um, 2021. The motor is super quiet. Uh, it doesn't have that, uh, that new Mercury four strokes, like that muscle car feel, you know what I mean? It's, uh, it's quiet, like turns on quiet, runs quiet. Uh, it's the fuel economy is awesome, believe it or not. Really? Um, the prop is a stock prop. So some guys will play, that's a T225. Some guys will play, they'll put a T1 on there if they're looking for different, you know, whatever. This runs 74 with me in it. Yeah, that's more so than I'm enough. So I'm not changing anything. <laughs> that's like, more than and it's so, a three blade on there. Yeah, the, the whole thing's just stock, you know, from the factory. So one question I always had about the Skeeters, I like the way the hull is laid out. They have a little bit of a gunnel up front, but they're very low, I guess, the way they actually run the fiberglass around the boat. And one of the things on the back is this backsplash is a little bit different. It's super, you see, it's super smooth. There's not much of a ridge right there. But a question that I always have, Byron, is I know on my Triton, which has a much higher kind of like motor splash area, I still get the, like a lot of backwash when I come off pad. Do you say, like, would you say you get more because of that setup or because, I don't even know what these are called, but does it actually not like, like I know you had an old Ranger. Does it wash out like the old Rangers? It's not near as bad as that. Okay. Um, coming off pad on a Ranger, you had to kind of goose it a little <laughs> bit before you sat down so it doesn't run over the back. Um, these Sponsons, is, uh, these are a Skeeter thing. Sponsons. Yeah, huh. and uh, they provide you know the flotation in the back and they make it for the whole shot to where it just pops right up really it's like it feels like the boat just lifts they're kind of like trim tabs almost a little Essentially, bit Essentially, yeah, yeah yeah so uh but with this being low you'll still get a little bit of backsplash if you just stop but it's not bad at all really that, that's kind of interesting because i like a low gunnel boat i'm i'm the king of whacking stuff against the edge of the boat when i'm flipping in that and i'm always leaving nicks and stuff but it's annoying but what do you say we jump inside and take a look at kind of how the storage lays out how he's got this thing rigged out and uh get into the juicy details so usually we go from back to front but let's go from front to back this time he has a ton of electronics which i absolutely love and i'm going to tell you right off the bat i'm going to turn this upside down this is a huge deck on here what's the beam on this boat do you know 
95 no 94 94 and 95 yeah. it seems like it's it's a little bit thinner than the triton but at the same time like it, there's always a balance between beam beam is great i like a wider boat but i'm not like a speed demon and i'm not running a lot of big water a, a slightly skinnier beam boat actually cuts through the waves better and you get a better ride the wider beam though for somebody kind of juggling around with video or like I'm just a mess with tackle and stuff. It's a little bit better for that, but this boat's kind of a blend of both. It's a little bit skinnier, but I bet you if you get in some like three, four footers, dude, she cuts and like oh, yeah. rides super clean. Uh, the, between the FX and the FXR, the FX reminded me of those, the older Tritons that were real narrow yeah, and pointy yeah, yeah. in the front. So the FXR, they made it wider up front. So right, they right. added like 10 inches up here. Really? And then they increased the dead rise of the hull so it cuts better and the skeeter and it rides drier up. probably yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a super dry and pushes boat. the water like down it pushes it out and down interesting so, yeah. see that's the kind of stuff i don't know about all the hydrodynamics and stuff like that i will tell you one other thing it's totally like different but so i just stepped you guys can see we got rod lockers which we'll talk about in a minute but i stepped onto this deck which i'm assuming is called the casting deck why is that so soft well the whole front deck on this boat's padded Really? Yeah, the entire I think they put deck. extra padding there, dude. They may. That's softer than this. Well, I guess this is... So this is actually double cushioned. And the, I guess that's two things. You know, one for comfortability, and the other thing, I am... I probably can't say the word, so I'm not going to say it starts with an N, but I'm very anal, let's use that word, about uh, about how loud you are, especially when you're flipping and doing stuff on shallow cover. And one of the things that happens is you start banging around, you get tired, and you start like stepping hard and things along those lines on the front of the boat, and that makes sound as you're fishing close quarters in shallow water. But with something like this, look at that. That's freaking soft. <laughs> that is pretty cool. All right, let's get to these electronics. What do you got up front? I see you have your your uh, by branding. I guess you got a Garmin and a Hummingbird. Yes. Um, so the Skeeter comes stock. The FXR comes stock with Helix 12s. Okay. So I upgraded mine to the Solix because I'm familiar with them. It's touchscreen. Okay. You can go back, and it's all networked together. You need one map card. It shares all the information. So I went Solix because I'm comfortable with it. Uh, a downside to that is they're a little slow. Okay. And uh, it, it takes them a while to turn on, and they're kind of quirky. Yeah. So, but, but an upside, though, Tennessee River, if you guys know, like, the standard for fishing Tennessee River or, like, Alabama and Tennessee is really Lake Master Chip, yeah. which is proprietary, I believe, to Hummingbird. Yep. It's a mapping system in that. I love my C-Map, but really, like, the standard, dude, is that you just see a lot of stuff on that, that Lake Master. Now, tell me why you have a Garmin up here. Uh, LiveScope. Live scope. So that so you, this is what like a ten or twelve inch That's kind of graph the right here. One twenty six SV. So it's a twelve inch screen. Um, I was told the minimum we want to go on a live scope on the Garmin is ten inches. Yeah. Um, the twelve is the same pixel rate. It's just stretched a little bit. Right. But you or I could never tell the difference between a 10 and a 12. I went 12 just because the others are 12. Yeah, well, I agree. Bigger is never wrong yeah. in that context, dude, because yeah. even with my active target, I'm sure it's the same thing. Like, the dots you're seeing, mm -hmm. it's tough to see sometimes, dude. Yeah. So is that unit dedicated 100% to your, what is it called, live scope? Live scope, yeah. Okay, so that's yeah. totally for that. So you got your double stacker. What um what graph bracket mounts are you using? I want to say that's a Bass Boat Technology. Bass Boat Technologies, that's what I got on mine. So you got a Minn Kota Altrex, I'm assuming, Mm -hmm. And then you have it rigged up. This is a 360 module. Uh, yeah, that's the Mega 360. Mega 360. Question: um, I don't have one of those. Do you run into issues? Do you fish Grass Lakes at all? Some, yeah, Gunnersville. Do you run into issues with that getting hung up, or is it pretty clean? Not, not terribly. Not terribly. All right, so let's move back here. We have kind of as I fall down. Whoa! So you got a step. That's a little different. So you have a lift to. Can I go trash can? Yeah. Trash can. Uh, all right, so you got a little trash can, a little under storage, another tool set. And why don't you show me how you have this thing kind of set up for storage. That's a day box. Okay. So I'll keep all my dies and whatnot in there and different tools and plug knockers. And, and that, that comes with an insert like that? Yeah, where that it's, comes from the factory. That's actually, here, lift that thing up for a second. You can see there's all these little ridges where you can hang baits, little kind of, what the hell are those for? Plug knockers. Oh. So you'll clip that on your line. Lock it and just slide and it. Drop down. it right down. Mine is much bigger than that. Well, I got one of those. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, so then you get under storage too. Yes, that's where I keep my medical stuff, uh, dude wipes. 
fire extinguisher, fire extinguisher. hand warmers, all that. Is this connected to this little upper rod locker yes. right here? Okay, yeah. so they these actually inter so that's the same compartment. That's awesome. So you could put rod. There's like a, the stair steps back there for rod storage too, if you wanted to go in that. So way. depending on how you actually want to customize a boat, you can yeah. make a choice. That's actually kind of cool. One of the one of the downsides, a lot of these newer boats have a sort of segmented rod locker, and frankly, one of the downsides that I see, I have a lot of. Uh, they're called, I think, 3,200 boxes or 3,900. Um, these compartments have a wall that separates them. And so you can only get so much stuff in there because it, it's not that wide. So you're limited to what you can actually store in there. I kind of like the connected flexibility, but at the same time, the, the separate access points, it makes it a little easier with some rods laying on the deck. So that runs all the way up. You got life jackets, you yep. got, I see sneaky swim baits, which we might talk about in another video. So they, they comes with a net here. Oh, so that's keep super my registration, cool. My little paddle in there dude that's all now that's an efficient use of space and then you have i have an active target unit like that i'm assuming that's your um that's the black box your the live camera. scope yeah. so you have yours mounted up there that's one thing that's been kind of I won't call it frustrating, but with um, with the active target or with the live scope, you need to mount an extra module. It's almost like the old structure scan when it just came out, and you have this this extra box just like right down there that you need to find a place for. And where Byron's got it mounted is actually super effectual because you put it on that wall, it only sticks out like two inches or so, and it doesn't take up any space on the floor, and that makes it accessible. But th that's a smart way to mount it. And that one's upside down. What does that mean? Well, so the black box. You mount it upside down and you have full access to all your cables and connections. And you there. can pop out and quick ch That's freaking yeah. sweet, dude. Yep. That's a good idea. Well, let's jump in this middle section. I want to kind of see what's what's under here. Now, this is in comparison to the Blazer, this is a full, I guess, single door lift. Mm -hmm. So this is a combination. Wow, this is cool. It's a combination rod locker. So well, walk me through it, dude. So uh comes with a net. Okay. And all the compartments have the lighting up here. Okay. Um Skeeter, the FXR, they they it ships with these milk crates with the metal dividers and the the Plano boxes in there. Um, I don't think they're necessary, and they weigh like 14 pounds a piece. <laughs> so I, I'll take those out and keep them safe, you know, for whoever's going to buy this boat next. But yeah, they're all pristine at home in a bin. Um, I put the the little non-skid stuff down there. Now they have oh, non-skid as idea. well. But Home Depot, you can buy that yeah. stuff from sliding around. But you can run your boxes like this all the way up if you choose. Or you can have your bins, your Bass Mafia you bins. You can have your bins, But yeah. then what's really cool is the rod, if you guys can see, there's like, instead of it being centered with the rod holes for the tips, they're actually on each side, so it sort of segments the rod so you can always access the items that you have in storage. Yeah. And then you got these trays right here. What the hell is, is that electric stuff for your lights No, or that's the supports. So on the Skeeter, the the whole top cap has an aluminum deck okay underneath all of this and that's bolted to the hull there so like this is all it's got that one piece feel that's kind of cool yeah but those are supports to keep everything rigid that's actually not i like rigid dude i like my reels rigid and my boats rigid. so when you're running you don't feel like it's flexing or moving around on you it's yeah 100 you don't know, get yeah. soft spots in the deck of that because fiberglass kind of yellow rain on it and oh and then we got the rod storage the rod storage so you can jam 30 plus rods in there with the, they call that a mega tube it's just one big hole up there i like that uh instead of the little individual dividers yep. But we're going to sneak down here because look at all them baits. I know this is a boat walkthrough, but look at what he's all <laughs> tied on. That's super cool. And then you have your little flexi string. And then that's the non-skid sort of factory stuff you're talking about yep. under there. It's just yep. like that FXR logo and that. Carpet in there adds weight. It uh, encourages Moldy moisture and yeah, mold dude. and stuff. And so they, they took out all the carpet out of all the boxes. Yeah, because in theory, you could hose that out. You could pressure clean that choker out, dude. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. it'll drain and everything like that. Yep. And once again, there's the, are these LED, I'm assuming, LED lighting kind of fixtures yep. on there. Yep. Is that Does that come standard? Actually, that's something to, to mention really quick. One really cool thing about the Skeeter is I'm all into custom, but custom gets expensive. So if you have sort of like a, a base plan that gets you about to where you want to be and then you can make some little changes is important. Skeeter has various what would you call them? boat build models or package They're models packages. Packages. So there's an apex okay there's a limited and this is a select what's highest what's lowest 
So, well, the Apex and Limited are just different packages. Different okay. Different things come standard. On the Select, which I'm on the Skeeter team. Okay. Uh, they they let us choose either the 20 or the 21 Select, which means we have to go through and select all the options. Okay. So I I pick the pinstripe and the colors and the seats and the lights and the padded deck. And, Pimp my ride kind of deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you start with a blank slate, and on the Select, you can build your own deal. So, I mean... MSRP or retail on that's going to be a little more, right? Um, but it's their, I would say, I guess it's their flagship model, you know. I got you. But for like your more, I, I want to call it entry level consumers. But so I trolled the Skeeter website before we were shooting this video, and they have like standard pricing. It's like yeah. here's what it is. Here's what you get. You get a motor. You get two hummingbirds. You get freaking lights, and it's. I think somewhere like 66 grand, 58 grand, you know, like depending on the size of the boat and depending on, you said this is an FXR. Yeah. And so is that the, the lower, like the step below or so what's the, the FXR is their highest end boat. Okay. And, and then, then they have one ZXR. Okay. So, so the, the major difference um, between the FXR and the ZXR, ZXR has the split coffin lids in the center box. Okay. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, and then they've got like the rocker switches for all your, controls okay which we're going to take a look at at the dash digital on this. this is all digital and then um there's a couple differences with that trailer that's an aluminum trailer this has the fiberglass fenders one more fun storage thing i have like i said knickknacks stuff like dude you'll fish for two days you'll you'll be retying you know cutting things off and you're like i don't want to put that away because on that next point i'm going to i might catch some fish so one of the cool things is this has a little kind of glove compartment almost like a hey i might need that compartment you can kind of toss some stuff in there or yeah hopefully we'll need that today scale and actually i see right below there you have your um your golden roll yep. and it stashes right away right in there that's actually pretty sweet you have your rod storage right there for your co-angler is there is i guess the no slip little pad right there so they can store some rods going flat yep. as yep. well as that's actually kind of cool because i bring like 47 rods every time i go fishing and that would usually those aren't co-angler rods those are those are my rods but let's scooch back here as i was stepping back here i'm like byron did i just crack your boat because i stepped on something soft and i'm like uh oh but this is actually a third seat in an insulated cooler right yep that is super cool dude because one of the problems i have is i'm always worried about stepping on like this on my triton because it yeah. does it flexes a little bit i'm like dude i don't want to screw stuff up but that kind of that's super it's stout soft enough to where a third person can comfortably ride there well and you don't lose traction when you're running like sometimes yeah. since i catch <laughs> magnum fish and i'll have to run around the boat you know chasing the, the fish around the boat like i'll actually step on that thing and i step on it and i'll slip even though it has that rubber non like skid whatever but this is like seriously like tractiony that that's pretty badass and it doubles as a second seat now the oblique handles those you have one right there what are they is that just fanciness on the seat I, I right there i think so getting in and out of the boat um, oh that's true if you're leaning over there messing in the live well or whatever that's actually a really good point front to back because the handles but stepping got, in and out of the boat it makes it a lot easier there that's actually a really good point so let's scooch over to we have our dash right here our console you have another hummingbird solix the the 12 mm -hmm. and is this the the digital pad you were talking about yeah so that's the uh that's the control panel for your live yeah. wells, bilge, lights, horn, whatever. But it is still a key start. It yeah, isn't like a ranger where start. it's a push button start yep. or anything like that. And then, so is that Atlas your jack, jack plate plate gauge? Okay. And then I mount the power pole buttons here. That makes a lot of sense. And then um, this is your multi. Is that kind of like the Mercury smart gauge for the yeah, Yamaha? Yeah, so you'll much? cycle through and you can see your hours and the tack and all okay. that different stuff, pushing all those buttons. And then here you've got your trim and your gas and whatever. That's pretty cool. And, and then, then you the blanker switches. The blanker switches. I actually love those. I thought they were kind of unnecessary, but the blanker switches next to the, the steering wheel, dude, when you're driving, it makes it so much easier it's to safer. tilt up. It's safe. Yeah, dude. And yeah. you can get, I'm not a big speed guy, but you get overall better performance. Even if it's going 50 instead of 48 or 45, like you get better performance out of the boat better spin on your prop and then you have yeah your controls that's here. awesome what is so it so that's the drain plug in and out like the the plug for the entire boat yeah really you forget it you just doop, you're good you're not getting wet <laughs> <laughs> i have gone swimming literally because i forgot to plug the boat and screw the thing in so that's kind of awesome and then you have i'm sure it's an added feature but it looks like you got a sound system in yeah there. i added the radio okay. and the hot put what the hell's all this back here so that is your uh 
Pro Charging Systems battery monitor. So you can tell where you're at with your starter battery and your trolling motor batteries. So you and have then, a monitoring, and then is that a plug down there? That's the, the charging plug for the, the onboard battery charger. Really? So yeah. you're not plugging anything into like the motor well or the back no. of the boat. So when you plug your boat in, it's right freaking yeah. there. Yeah. That is very different, dude. And that's your oxygenator, which is standard, and your dry dock. What is dry dock? So it, it'll circulate air through all the compartments. Are you serious? Yeah. Like for basically keeping up mold and moisture yeah. and if you get a little damp or whatever, you, you turn that on when me? you get back to the house and it'll just recirculate air through all the compartments. You should almost still be living in Florida, dude. Like that's <laughs> huge. So that might seem like something that's stupid. And even though like he doesn't have carpet in there, you'd be amazed. And actually, if you fish, you know, dude, your boat gets wet one day. And for the next three weeks, every time you open up your rod locker or something, dude, that musty smell of grandma's house or like grandma's basement kicks in. Not your hooks rust. Yeah. You're, well, that's the other thing, dude. Even with the expensive like store, like tackle storage solutions that we have now like dude that moisture still gets in there and you, you like it it rusts stuff and it screws up your expensive lures that is i've never seen that mm -hmm. on a boat that is a cool feature well let's take a look at these live wells dude so what do you got going on they open to the side like that they're pretty wow they're pretty deep so the oxygenators in there they've got lighting in there the removable center storage there is lighting in there you. where are the lights located right, right in under the back. Right in the back, so on the lower thing, so you yeah. see the shadow of the fish if you're yeah. fishing a night derby and that. This does have a divider. Is it removable? It is. Okay. If somebody like yourself catching that wow. big of fish. Dude, um, like stroking my out. ego, Byron. So. I like it. <laughs> So we also have some storage back here. Um, there are two basically just side opening things. Is that the vent yeah. for the air thing? So basically there's almost like an HVAC system in here for that, huh? Yeah, it'll suck it in under there and just circulate it all around. That is the craziest, coolest thing. Yeah. So you got some storage. Not something else about Skeeter. All these compartments have this lip here. Okay. That'll suck up into the underside. Yeah. So all these lids have this foam on the bottom side to keep it quiet really mm -hmm. and that is rigid a lot of boats will have that little rubber gasket running around it which yeah. gets ripped off or your latches get stuck on it but this once again speaks to that that aluminum capping right or yeah, that front deck, decking yeah. so everything's like aluminum that's actually very different and very cool uh storage size like they're they're actually deeper than they are long which they are on this other side we can there's a ton of kitex in there Ooh. Kitex. I've been catching some bass on them things. So like here, okay, and they're that deep. So Dude, like they are, are the... super deep. So you can get thir basically 3,700 or 3,200 size boxes in the bottom, and then you can stack on top, which yeah. is actually kind of nice. Throw a jacket in there, yep. and then once again, you have your, your LED lights and that. And these are all lockable latches, I assume, mm -hmm. pretty standard in that. And then I added the locker bar from the factory up front. And... Is that for uh, when you're traveling or something yeah, to lock yeah. across? Oh, yeah. I see the little holes. All right, so let's take a look. I noticed immediately your motor well is... I guess divided. I'm gonna actually jump out of the boat so I can get a better angle on this. But why don't you open that thing out and show me how how you got this back laid? So that this is, is new for the FXR. What is new? This wide open back compartment. So used to there was one in the middle, and then to get to the batteries, you'd have to dig in and under, and it was a huge really. Butt. So that I mean you can access anything you want in here easily. Yeah, that's basically we're from edge of the boat to the edge of the boat full access and that's huge I, i'm sure you've had the same problem like electronics i'm running more batteries i'd actually like to have an extra battery for some of my electronics so having the space to access and kind of shift things around and make the space adapt to your needs exactly what they are is important so this enables it this is super clean dude yeah like super clean so you got the three i went lead acid on the trailer motor batteries and they i haven't had any issues whatsoever okay and then I went with a 31 AGM for the starter and uh, with the C-Clear power harness. Yes, old Nathan, dude. And so all the electronics have clean, consistent power, yep. as he would say, and it, it makes a huge difference. This is the first year I've run that, and 
everyone I have going forward will have the same thing. Dude, it's Nathan's deal is badass. It seems like a simple fix, but Nathan did an amazing job designing that. And like, you don't get the flickering on the graphs, no. and it's clear. If you now, granted, if you're somebody who's kind of entering using graphs and electronics, you're not going to notice. If you're somebody who's used a lot of electronics, done a lot of offshore fishing, you're going to notice it's 20 to 30 percent clearer. You get more definition on your dots as well as your shadows. Like it, you'll you'll pick up on it. So you got the harness in there. I um, keep tools and stuff back here yep. on the side, and then I've got more tools and the throw over there. You actually have extra space too. Like yeah, this, like you this can master switch doesn't here. need to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. That's actually really cool. You could mount that up here. I mean, because we put all that in ourselves. Yeah. But the power pole pumps are back here. This is I really cool about them. Skeeter now. What's that? It comes with this. Uh, I forget exactly what they call it, but it's like a jump box. Yeah. So say your starter battery goes, you can switch it to all or two and jump the motor off the trolling motor batteries. That is sweet. So that's standard. So the need for a jump box in the boat's no longer. That is sweet. One of the biggest things that scares me all the time, especially running all these electronics, is it's fishing for elongated periods of time, like literally. So you'll get out, you'll get on a spot and say you're catching fish, so best thing ever, right? But you end up fishing there for like two, three hours and you never crank the boat and you're running two graphs on front, two graphs on back, like running a bunch of power to your, to your live scope, or your active target. And you go to crank your, your motor and it goes, whoa, 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 and it will not turn over, dude. So that is a huge deal. It's always good to have kind of a backup. This is freaking sweet, dude. I, I actually really like this boat, Byron. Like, I haven't seen Byron in, I think, like six years. So, it, one, it was good to see you, dude. Byron is a super cool dude. What's your Instagram again, real quick? Byron underscore Childers. So, go check him out. If you have any questions, uh, hit up Byron or you actually, what dealer do you get this from or who do you work with with the, the Skeeter stuff? So, Open Season Sports and Marine in Camden, Tennessee. Okay. It's uh, West Tennessee. Um, he's been awesome with me, known him for years, been a longtime customer. Um, but if you have any questions on Skeeter or want to check out a couple, you can contact me. If, you want to, if you're in Middle Tennessee or North Alabama and you want to go for a test drive, that's cool. Just hit me up there um, or I can get you in contact with Ryan. Make sure to check out Byron. He is a good buddy, but I got a lake right in front of me right here. So I want to get out fishing. We're going to do a little kind of ride around in the Skeeter to check it out. But make sure to stay tuned. We're going to do some more the search for the perfect bass boat videos and see what we can find because at some point we're going to have to pull the trigger on one of these guys. Hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see you either back out on the water, talking boats, or going fishing.